Jefferson last week against the Detroit Lions. Jefferson made one of his eight catches on the afternoon with the pack behind 10 to nothing. And the crowd at Lambeau Field came alive, as did the Packers, rolling to a 31 to 17 victory over the Lions. Lynn Dickey had another outstanding day passing, 21 of 30 on the afternoon. Two touchdown passes, this one to James Lofton. Today, the Packer defense must stop this young man, rookie rushing star of the New Orleans Saints, George Rogers. CBS Sports. Or Jets. And Fred, certainly the Packers have been throwing the ball awfully well. Dickey, Lofton, Jefferson and company. They've got a chance today to pick on that young Saint secondary. Well, Tim, you'd think that that's what they would do today. But Lynn Dickey told me today that they're going to try to run the ball about 45 times today. Running the ball is what the Saints do better than they throw it, mainly because they've got that great rookie running back, George Rogers. Packer defense will be busy trying to stop him. You sure will. George has to run the ball for the Saints to win. Now, uh, you're also going to see probably a lot of offensive sets from the Saints to give the Green Bay defense a little bit more problems than they're used to. So let's get going, Tim. All right, Fred, we're looking at the New York Saints on the sideline and about to kick it off for the Detroit Lions is Jan Stenerud and Rodgers and Wilson are back. That's Jimmy Rogers, number 41, no relation to George and Wayne Wilson, number 30. And we're underway at the Superdome. And it is Wilson dropping the ball at the goal line. That brings the Packers in closer to the five, but Wilson, a pretty good recovery, gets out to the 15-yard line where the New Orleans Saints will start. Guy Prather made the tackle on the kickoff play. Archie Manning will lead him out with George Rogers, number 38, Jack Holmes, the fullback. Guido Merkins and Jeff Groth, a pair of former Houston Oilers, will be the wide receivers. Lafari, Sturt, Hill, Adams, Brock, and Larry Hardy across the front line. Hardy, a very improved tight end, the fourth-year man from Jackson State. There is Archie Manning. We expect to see Dave Wilson in some action today, but Bump Phillips says uh, that will be determined by the tenor of the game here on the Superdome. Rogers, the first carry on the toss, and he bashes his way out to the 20-yard line for a gain of five. First man to hit him was the safety number 23, Maurice Harvey, tripping him up. Defensively for the Green Bay Packers to our right, Mike Butler, Terry Jones, and Casey Merrill along the front. The linebackers are outstanding. Anderson and Douglas outside, Wingo and Cumbie inside. And a secondary of Mark Lee, Mike McCoy on the corners, Maurice Harvey and Mark Murphy getting the start with Johnny Gray now on injured reserve. And Murphy has done well since coming into the lineup as a starter. In motion is the tight end Hardy out of the eye. A big hole for Rodgers. And he gets over the 25 to the 27-yard line where Terry Jones and Rich Wingo combine to stop him. And the Saints have a first down doing what they do best, giving the ball to George, who comes into this game with 1,497 yards in pursuit of a whole bunch of records, the most significant being the rookie rushing mark held by Otis Anderson of St. Louis, 1,605 for the season. It is first down for New Orleans at their own 25. In motion, the wide receiver broke, and they give again to Rodgers going off left tackle behind Sturt and Lafari. And Freddie Dreyer, it seems that uh, they're picking early on the right side of the Packers line. That's Rodgers three times behind his left tackle, Lafari, and the guard, Sturt. They would like to run anywhere they can today, but mostly they'd like to run at Mike Douglas. Now, he's a good football player, but he does not really, they think, the Saints think, that Mike Douglas handles the, the, the tight end that well, so they'll probably give him a lot of work today. Ezra Johnson is in at right defensive end for Merrill. On second and about six, to make it a long six. Rope in motion behind the ball. This time they get Rodgers behind the line. Rich Wingo, number 50, was the second man on him, and Terry Jones, the nose tackle, did an outstanding job peeling blockers and stopping Rodgers for a loss of a couple. It brings up a passing down, third and seven, we'll call it. Loss of a yard on the play to George Rodgers. That brings Wayne Wilson, number 30, into the lineup, and Rodgers out for New Orleans. Wilson comes wide to the right. Four down linemen are in for the Packers defensively and five defensive backs. Lots formation to the right. Now 
now Wilson back in motion to the slot. Manning wants to throw, and he just gets it away. It is caught by Holmes, but he's tackled immediately. Outstanding defensive work by the Packers. It was Maurice Harvey making the tackle on Holmes, and the Packers had a strong rush. Manning just got the ball away before being sacked. So the Saints will have to punt. It's one of the things that the Saints are going to have to contend with. Now, on a 3-4 front, Green Bay will usually bring a linebacker, and that will probably be Mike Douglas. He's got eight and a half sacks so far on the year, and they're going to see an awful lot of Mike Douglas today. Russell Erksleben is in to punt, bringing an average of 40.8 into the game. Nixon is the deep man for the Packers, and he has been doing pretty well on punt returns, as you can see. Erksleben hits it from his own 17-yard line. Nixon takes it at the pack 35. He's hit immediately by Guido Merkins and driven back to the 35. And so the Green Bay Packers will have their first offensive series from their own 35. When we return, we are on 37-yard line. Pretty good field position for Lynn Dickey. 21 of 30 last week. 57.7 completion average. That third in the NFC. Gary Ellis in motion out of the Packer backfield. They throw the screen out to Ellis. And good defensive work by Derlin Moore, number 74. The left defensive end who ranged out with Ellis and was right there when he caught the ball. Lost of the yard on the play. Offensively for the Packers, Harlan Huckleby and Gary Ellis are the running back. James Lofton and John Jefferson. They strike fear into the hearts of any secondary. Concar, go forth, McCarron, Harris, and Cook along the front with Paul Kaufman, the tight end. Loss of two on the play brings up second and 12 for the Green Bay Packers. Lynn Dickey. As the tight end Cotton set up on the wing and then in motion, Ellis back in the misdirection and the Saints close that down just over the line. A scrimmage gain of maybe a yard. It's going to be a very, very good uh, battle today defensively for both teams. Now, I do know that uh, 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 Dickey wants to run the ball a lot today, but the Saints are very, very improved against the run. Well, you saw their front three. They've got a rookie, Jerry Boyarski, between Moore and Grooms, the veterans. They've got a young secondary. The linebackers include a rookie, Ricky Jackson, a rookie, Glenn Red, and two rookies back in the secondary itself, Poe and Russell Gary. Gary, the number two pick from Nebraska. It is third down, and about ten and a half yards to go. Dickey has time in the pocket, and it is complete to Jefferson at the 50-yard line, and a Packer first down. A hard hit by Watlett, the nickelback, but Jefferson held on. This is this is one of the things that they've done very well the second half of the season. You see Jefferson come down here, the way he moves his head and his shoulders. He gets the secondary to move and then goes to the open area. And that play worked only because Dickey threw the ball perfectly. First down, Green Bay at midfield, a 13-yard gain for John Jefferson. Good pass protection for Lynn Dickey. Hoffman the tight end in motion. They give it to Huckleby. Good hole behind the right guard. Leotis Harris and Huckleby blasts out to the New Orleans 42-yard line before Ricky Jackson, the linebacker, pulled him down. A pickup of eight yards, second and two. Harlan, ha uh, Harlan Huckleby, 127 rushes coming into the game, taking over the starting spot from Turdell Middleton when Middleton went down with a hamstring pull, and Huckleby has held on to that starting spot ever since. Jefferson comes wide left, locked into the right. Second and three. Huckleby was let go by the New Orleans Saints. Down to home in Green Bay. Ellis, nowhere to go. Comes back the other way, slipping tackles, and he has the first down and then some. Gary Ellis reversing his field and taking it all the way to the 26-yard line of New Orleans before Johnny Poe finally pushed him out of bounds. One of the things that has helped Green Bay a great deal is not only the play of the offensive line, but it's plays like this from people like this. Jerry Ellis right here really making this play on his own, and he gets great. Look at John Jefferson down here blocking for him. This is the type of plays that have helped the Packers come back in the second half of the season. 16-yard gain for Ellis, and you saw that Frank Watlett, who appeared to be blitzing on that last play, had a great chance to stop him. But missed the tackle, and Ellis converted it into a first down. So the Packers are threatening early. They fake the 
hand off to Ellis and flip it out to the tight end Lewis Gary Lewis the rookie from Texas Arlington and a gain of about seven yards for the pack before Pro and Kovac combined to pull him down. This telecast presented by authority of, a, of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express consent of the New Orleans Saints and the National Football League is prohibited. Second and two for Green Bay at the 19 of New Orleans. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer. We are in the first period, 7.55 to play. And the Packers are threatening to score. Thompson in motion. Huckleby. Huckleby is tripped up by Monty Bennett in at nose tackle, the rookie from Kansas State, falling forward close to the first down yardage. An official timeout, and they will no doubt measure this one. Well, the officials pointing out to New Orleans, our referee today is Bob McElwee. And it uh, looks like we're gonna have a measurement, indeed we will. Arlen Thompson has come into the lineup for go for it. St. Louis leading the Giants 3-0 in the first quarter. We'll be watching that one with great interest because the Giants and the Cardinals, both 7-7, seven and seven, are very much in the wild card struggle in the NFL, uh, along with these Green Bay Packers. Of course, the Pack still has a chance to win the Central Division. Washington in front of Baltimore, 7 to nothing. Unfortunately, uh, the Colts uh, continue to struggle. Washington with a very remote chance at a playoff spot, but still in it. Washington is a lot like Green Bay. They've improved the second half of the season. First down for the Green Bay Packers, knocking on the door in Saints territory. Jefferson and Lofton and both out to the left. Dickey to the tight end, Kaufman, and what a hit by Watlett. And Kaufman could not hold on as the ball arrived, and so did Frank Watlett, the rookie from Kansas. At this point in time, what you want to do if you're a defensive person now, you want to be able to punish the people who have the football. This is your territory down here now. Frank Wallace lets, know, lets the Packers know by the, put, the hit he puts on Paul Kaufman. When you get down in this territory, if you're a good defensive team, you got to get your back bristled up a little bit. And Frank Wallace doing that today right now. Gary Lewis came in for Paul Kaufman. He took that wrap from the nickelback. Wattlett in his second and ten. Gary Ellis and he breaks one tackle and another and gets inside the 10. Gary Ellis who came into the game with 752 yards in rushing. What a find he's been since being picked up from the Rams. Bennett and Kovac finally pulled him down. Gary Ellis indeed was uh, briefly in the Saints camp. They passed on him a year ago after a brief tryout. Seven yard gain for Ellis. Ball spotted at the nine, brings up third and three. Kaufman back into the game at tight end. Jefferson goes out to the right. Lops into the left, Dickey wants to throw. Quickly out to Ellis, wide open. And touchdown, Gary Ellis, breaking the tackle of Dave Raymer, and the Packers score early with 6.27 remaining in the first quarter here at the Superdome. This is a real good call down inside here because what happens is you get a play action fake which, which has a tendency to freeze your secondary people. Now watch here, oh, that wasn't a play action. He just flips the ball out to here and what happens is he goes out, Ellis goes out into an area where there are no linebackers. He gets away from the coverage and forces a one-on-one -on -one situation. Jan Stenerud has the point after playoff but have yet to clinch the NFC East Division and the Giants still alive. Stenerud's kickoff as the pack leads 7-0 early, taken by Jimmy Rogers at the five-yard line. Rogers running hard over the 20 to the 22-yard line. He is met there by Maurice Harvey and reserve linebacker number 55, Randy Scott. And so the New Orleans Saints will see if they can get it going here from their own 23-yard line. Tim Ryan and Fred Dreyer in the Superdome in New Orleans for this young team 16 rookies on the 45 man roster of the New Orleans Saints 11 of them drafted five free agents Bum Phillips building for the future using all of the youngsters they all get lots of playing time and he thinks he's got a fine nucleus here Hardy moves over to make the strong side right number 87 
in motion behind the ball is Jeff Gross. Play action. Manning flips it out to the fullback home. He is dropped by Douglas and then finished off by Wingo for a gain of about five yards. Now, New Orleans has had a tough time this year coming back once they've been down early in the game. What they have to do now, Archie has to work the ball down the field, do the things he does best, give the ball to George, do some little dink-off passes like that, move the ball down the field, and get the ball in the end zone. They have to score on the Packers. The Packers went 62 yards in 10 plays, used up 454 on the clock. Dickey, nine yards to Ellis for the score. It is second and five. Edward Johnson in at right defensive end number 90 for Green Bay. George Rogers and good defensive work by the Packers holds him to a gain of three. Mike Douglas, a very active linebacker, number 53, Douglas made the initial hit. Pickup of about three. It will be second and a long yard. Let's call it second and two. The Giants now in front of St. Louis, seven to three. A fumble recovery by George Martin, the defensive end, returning at 20 yards for the score. So a big defensive play as the Giants in front. Both those teams are seven and seven. Hit shot to Rodgers, and Rodgers, good second effort, spinning away from Douglas, who nearly had him deep for a loss. Rodgers appears to have made the first down. John Anderson, the linebacker number 59, tripped him up. But the rookie running back from South Carolina showing what he can do. They're going to measure it. Rodgers trailing Tony Dorsett. 1,506 yards Dorsett has coming into Dallas's game today. They have the first down. He's got a chance to catch Tony. He's got a chance to pass Otis Anderson's rookie record. And if he has a 100-yard day, he will also break that record held by Anderson of eight 100-yard afternoons in his rookie season. San Diego in front of Tampa Bay, seven to zip in the first period. And of course, Tampa Bay currently leading the NFC Central with an eight and six record. Grote and Merkins both out to the left for the Saints on first down from their own 31. Grote in motion behind the ball. Play action. Manning to Grote cutting back across the middle and a gain of about six yards on the play. It was number 52, George Cumbie, the second year man from Oklahoma on the tackle. Their receivers, Groth and Guido Merkins, have not really had an awful lot of uh, opportunities this year to really catch the ball. You see Arch just dropping back, does a good job waiting for uh, Jeff to cross over the middle and get in the open and dumps the ball. He laid it out there nicely for him so he could take it in. There is Jeff Groth, second and five. Hardy jumps to the right side. Tight end number 87, back in motion the other way goes Groth. A lot of movement by the Saints offensively. And George Rogers runs into traffic at the line of scrimmage. It was Butler, the left defensive end, that he collided with. And then Douglas and Wingo were there quickly to make sure he went no farther. So a gain of only about a yard and a half for George Rogers. It'll bring up third and four. The Charger touchdown against Tampa Bay. Dan Fouts passing 27 yards to Eric Sievers. We gave you that score, seven to, dip, seven to zip San Diego in front of Tampa Bay. Double tight end now for the Saints. They show this a lot. Hobie Brenner, the rookie from USC, has come in to join Larry Hardy. 21 yards on the day for Rodgers. We'll be documenting his efforts all afternoon. Rodgers running hard, has the first down. Boy, Fred Dreyer, he did that on his own. There was not a big hole for him to maneuver through. But Rogers showing what he can do. George is, is the type of player that you give him just a little bit of a crack. Now, he gets the ball out of the eye formation, gets it deep, and see the cutback possibilities. Number 45, Jack Holmes, is really an important factor in the Saints offense because he's the lead back. He's the guy that George looks for to hit a hole, and he did that very nicely. Mark Murphy, the safety, made the tackle. Number 37, it is first down. The Saints moving it out smartly from their own end. Rodgers again, 
in this time he is dropped by Butler number 77 the five-year man from Kansas who has a lot of speed for a big man at 6'5 265 he's their best defensive lineman and one of the things that he does real well in watching him in the films as well as out here so far in the game is once he engages with an offensive lineman he is very good at getting off of blocks and your successful defensive linemen nowadays are the ones who not only give a good pass rush like he does but get off of blocks and make plays like that. Obi Brenner has come in to make a double tight end situation with one setback that is Holmes. George Rogers out of the lineup on second and 12. Merkins and Roach the wide receivers. Play action. They go up the middle to Hardy and it is picked up by Maurice Harvey on a deflection and Harvey's got lots of running room. Harvey all the way inside the 30 yard line close to the 25. Archie Manning the quarterback came over to trip him up there. The pass receiver intended was Larry Hardy. Manning kind of slings the ball here. Archie just tried to lay it out there over the middle and when you do that see how many people are around over the middle there that's a dangerous area you want to get the ball to your receivers quick and what happens here is Hardy just makes a good play because he's in the right position these are the type of things these are the type of plays that's been happening to the Packers the second half of the season it was Mark Murphy who got a hand on the pass intended for Hardy and it deflected to Maurice Harvey you know Harvey was hit by an automobile last week and practiced during practice coming uh, from not during practice but after <laughs> practice he crossed the, crossed the street it's really no laughing matter but uh, fortunately for him he, he just suffered a bruised hand and obviously he's all right 46 yard return for Maurice Harvey Harlan Huckleby on first down picks up a couple before Rob Nair number 55 put the stop on him so a big defensive play by the Packers and Fred this has been the the big turnaround for Green Bay Bart Starr telling us yesterday you know all of a sudden the second half of the season we're the ones getting the turnovers instead of giving them up and it's uh, made a big difference in their fortunes. Well here's an interesting situation right here Ricky Jackson who was really the spirit of their defense now is hurt. Their backs are against the wall they're at the, about the 24 yard line one of their best players is hurt it affects you mentally. Not only physically for him, but play the Theo Bell at 7-7 with 7.03 to go first period there. It is second and eight here. Ken Bordelon has come in for Ricky Jackson at left linebacker for the New Orleans Saints. The Packers on the move following the interception by Harvey. Dickey for Jefferson. Touchdown. John Jefferson between two defenders makes a brilliant catch. Myers and Poe were there. But Jefferson outleaped him, and the Packers are up 13 to nothing. Number 55. It was, was Jefferson, not Hopkins. However, let's see it again. Well, right here, you see J.J. You know the amount of concentration it, it, it takes to come in between two receivers, like two uh, secondary people like that. And watch this. Dickey goes back. He knows where he's going to throw it. He wants to get it to, into the end zone close to J.J. because he knows Johnny will go up and get it. Well, the however, had to do with the flag down, but it was offside against New Orleans. So the touchdown counts. Stenerud's point after is good, but there is a flag down again. There was an offside penalty on the touchdown play against New Orleans, so the touchdown counts. The holding penalty here is against Green Bay, so Stenerud will have to kick it from a little farther back. But Green Bay coming up with a 26 yard drive and two plays following the interception and uh, that's the sign of a good football team Fred when they first of all that they make the turnover as they did and then capitalize immediately two you're, plays later they're in the end zone you're absolutely right and these are the type of things that like you said earlier we'll probably say this throughout the whole game this is the reason that Green Bay has been doing so well they're capitalizing on their on their takeaways John Jefferson with a touchdown catch holding Dickey. 33 offense Jim Jensen is charged with the holding penalty from referee Bob McElwee, reserve running back. Jensen picked up on waivers from the Denver Broncos. What he's, uh, what I think the flag is for is Jensen is the wing you see out here. And what he does is he, he, he crouches down and makes sure no one comes around the corner on your left hand side of the street screening. But hey, did he probably hooked the guy is what he did. Stenerud will have to kick it from the 20 yard line, making it a 30 yard point after. That's routine for him the way he's been kicking this year. 
He's got 21. Along with Jimmy Rogers, number 41, and it comes to Wilson at the eight. Wilson's got running room up the sideline, and it is Stenaru knocking him out at the 46-yard line. And had he got by Stenaru, not renowned as a defensive player, that could have been the distance for Wayne Wilson, third-year man from Shepherd College. So good field position for the Saints. Fred, they got to do something on this drive with time winding down first period, a 39-yard return. You're right. What they have to do now is don't be afraid to make mistakes. You're already behind 14 to nothing. The Saints over the last year now have not really been a good uh, catch-up football team. So Archie will just get the ball to his best people and let them play. First down from their own 46-yard line with that 39-yard return. In motion is Jeff Groth, George Rogers. And he is met by a pair of Packers, Wingo, number 50, and Cumby, number 52. The two inside linebackers. There'll be a loss of about a yard, maybe two on the play. Let's see where they spot it. Well, no, they're going to put it over the line of scrimmage on forward progress. He got about a half yard. Johnson comes in for Merrill at right defensive end. And the gun is sounded, ending the first quarter here at the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Green Bay and then 10 for the New Orleans Saints now to our right in their home white uniforms. The Packers in green to our left. The ball at the 46-yard line of New Orleans. Archie Manning continues at quarterback. Play action. Can't find an open man. Now George Rogers gets loose and makes the catch. But it will be very little gain, a couple of yards at most, as Mike Douglas picked him up and forced him out of bounds. In that first period, you can see that Green Bay had five first downs to three by New Orleans and dominated in total yards, 88 to 31, and they lead on the scoreboard, as one might expect, 14 to nothing. It is third down and eight for New Orleans from their own 48-yard line. Wayne Wilson in the ball game. Going into the slot right, Tucson Tyler, the rookie fullback, number 42, in for the first time. In motion behind the ball, Grote. Manning has time, flips it out, and Tyler running hard has a first down and then some. All the way to the 32 of Green Bay, where Mark Murphy, number 37, pulled him down. He's suffering from the flu today. <laughs> Looks a little tired so early in the game. But I'll tell you, what they need to do now, you see, you see Guido here getting ready to come off the line of scrimmage. Well, now we have a now we have a situation here. Archie's got the ball. He's just what he's trying to do is hold up, see what he side on that ball. He had a rush coming in. He did a good job of adjusting to the flight of the ball. He gets the ball out here to uh, to Tyler and just let him do it. That's what Archie needs to do is let his players play. Tucson Lovertour Tyler name of that young man. New Orleans fans know all about him. We'll tell you a little bit more about that name when we get a chance. It is first down to the Saints. George Rogers, and he gives it off to Groth. Groth cutting it back, and he'll be buried near the line of scrimmage. They'll still lose about a yard on the play. The reverse to Jeff Groth, the wide receiver from George Rogers, and it was Rich Wingo making the tackle. So the razzle-dazzle didn't pay off. The one thing, is, as George takes a flip here, you see what happens, the penetration right there. The number one point of attack was taken care of defensively by the by the uh, secondary fellow from, uh, it was Mark Murphy, the safety, who forced right away. That made that made the Saints commit right away, and the rest was just uh, the effort of... Uh... The Packer defense. Yes. <laughs> intended for Guido Merkins. He was wide open and he dropped the ball. Guido Merkins from Sam Houston State picked up as a free agent from Houston a year ago getting a chance under his old coach Gum Phillips to be a starter this season but he dropped that one. So it is third down and a long 11 for New Orleans with the ball at Green Bay's 36. Guido Merkins is the first year that he's actually played at one position He's usually a, a utility guy, can play anywhere on the offense, but it's the first year he's really played one position the whole season, and he uh, feels worse about that than anybody else. Four down linemen for the Green Bay Packers, and the nickel defense in on third and 11. Manning has Larry Hardy, the tight end. First 
down inside the 20 to the 18 of Green Bay, where John Anderson, the linebacker, number 59, made the tackle on him with help from Estes Hood. But it was Hood who was beaten on the play by the tight end, Hardy. What Archie wants to do is get matchups. He wants to get the people like Larry Hardy on a linebacker as opposed to a safety. And right there, they, they did a good job of isolating Hardy on a linebacker. First down at the 19, the Saints on the move. Tyler and Rogers are the running backs in the eye. Hardy and Hobie Brenner, two tight ends in the lineup. George Rogers ran into Tyler and is buried behind the line of scrimmage. Well, the rookie Tyler caught standing still there as the lead block. Rich Wingo, the man to wrap up Rogers. And they had all the blockers in, but lost a yard of the play. What Green Bay is doing, just like Lynn Dickey wanted to do, they, they wanted to establish the offensive line as well as the defensive line of scrimmage. Now watch here as, as the lineman. Look how much depth of safety gets coming up here. Look at the flow of linebackers and safeties to the football. Now this is what turns teams around, and the Green Bay Packers are really playing good football. Loss of the yard, second and 11 back at the 20, and motion to tight end Hardy behind the ball. Play action, Rodgers knocked down on the fake, and the pass intended for Tyler, the fullback, is incomplete. Very tight coverage by George Cumbie, number 52, doing an excellent job, and the play goes incomplete. Third and 11. They really like George Cumbie. The Packers like him, and, and Archie really respects number 50, George Cumbie. Or excuse me, 52, George Cumbie. You see him leaving the field. He is a very, very good football player in his second year out of Oklahoma. Four down linemen in again on this passing down. Third and 11 from the 20-yard line. The 20-yard line of Green Bay. Now Cumbie came back in, and timeout is called. Let's see who called it. Green Bay, a little defensive mix-up. They had gone to the four down line to nothing. The Bills leading New England. Ferguson to Cribs and a touchdown run by Roosevelt Leakes. Here it is third and 11. Wayne Wilson out as a wide receiver. The lone setback is Tucson Tyler. Two wide receivers in for the Saints. Four down lineman for Green Bay. Count by Manning as he looks over the defense. And the pass is tipped and intercepted. Growth made the tackle. It was Mike McCoy who came up with the interception, number 29. And two interceptions, both of them on tips, have hurt the Saints. Archie wants to sprint out here with the option of maybe throwing the ball here. Look at that, what a great athletic play that was. That was Maurice Harvey who tips the ball up like that. But Archie wanted to run outside to see the receivers better and to get the ball to somebody quickly, but it was a great defensive play by Harvey. These are the types of things that help teams turn their whole seasons around, let alone games. And the Packers are playing like they really want to win a championship. The Green Bay Packers with a 14-0 lead continue to make the big defensive plays. Harvey and McCoy combining on that one. First down from their own 15-yard line. Gary Ellis. Off tackle left. He's met by the linebacker Glenn Red, number 58. Rookie from Brigham Young and Jim Kovach, number 52, the third-year man from Kansas. Tom Phillips very high on Glenn Red. The 11th pick of the Saints this season. And has been doing a great job. There you see Ricky Jackson back in. He suffered a bruised knee, but uh, came right back in on the next defensive series for New Orleans. Saw him flexing it there just a moment ago. Second and seven after the gain of three by Ellis. Huckleby hit right at the line of scrimmage. Ricky Jackson, number 57, the Pittsburgh rookie number three pick. Loss on the play of about a yard. You'll see Ricky Jackson, 57, coming into your picture here on to the right. See the way he gets rid of the blocker right there? What a great play by a rookie. What he does is he feels the weight of the blocker, and then when he wants to get rid of the blocker, he throws him and still keeps his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage and the, and the runner in front of him. It's a great play by a rookie. Third down and about seven. Tight end Hoffman in motion. Dickey has the time, now runs out of it, and he is sacked. Good coverage downfield. Ricky Jackson made the tackle and the sack. 
for Jackson. That is his eighth sack of the season. Grooms and Bennett had good pressure on. Dickey appeared to have enough time, but the coverage was good. You're right, Tim. The coverage was good. But watch Jackson here now. See that little arm over move he makes here on Fred Sturt, 68. Then he comes right down the line of scrimmage, right where he should be. Now, this is the type of thing the Saints need. That's an injured player making a big play. Loss on the play of about seven yards. Standing in the end zone is Stakowitz. And the punt returner is Grote. Stakowitz hits it from his four-yard line. Not a good punt taken at the 49 by Groth. Groth into Packer territory. Dropped at the 41-yard line. A Green Bay by Guy Prather, reserve linebacker number 51. So again, the New Orleans Saints with some good field position. Let's see what they'll be thinking. Who would have thought that they could be thinking like that at this stage of the season, the amazing 49ers. Tyler and Rodgers. The running backs for New Orleans. George Rogers dragging Mike Douglas or Terry Jones, pardon me, number 63 for about three yards. Jones held on to him, got some help from Merrill, and closed him down after a gain of three. It's important now for Archie to be to be not conservative, but to be patient enough to let things develop. And he's got the ball inside the 40-yard line. They're really not out of the game, but they need to strike here. They need to get seven points. Got three running backs in now. Holmes and Tyler and Rogers. That is a power play, and Rogers dropped the ball. It's recovered by Green Bay. George Cumby, the linebacker number 52. The ball popped right to him out of the hands of Rogers as New Orleans had lined up two fullbacks in front of their star rookie. Now they have a power eye, which the two front guys in the front here for George. They're blocking very well, but George simply made a mistake. And that type of mistake is going to cost a turnover, something the Green Bay Packers have been doing a quite a bit of lately. You know, I got to say that they shared that 50% with Archie Manning. That did not look like a good handoff from the quarterback. No, you're right. It was not a good handoff. It was a little, bit, little confused there. So the ball recovered on the 39-yard line. And uh, it is at the 41 as Cumbie was stopped there. And the Packers come up with yet another turnover. They've had two interceptions and a fumble recovery. Turdell Middleton is in the lineup at running back number 34, along with Gary Ellis. The pack stopping the Saints again. Dickey passing on first down to the tight end, Kaufman. And Kaufman has another first down inside the 50 to the 46-yard line of the New Orleans Saints. Red and Kovach combining on the tackle. Good play by Dickey and Kaufman. Now, they use Paul Co Kaufman very well in their offense. You see, he, you see Dickey looking down the field, and he can't find anybody. They're all covered, so he goes off to Kaufman here. Now, he's over here for a purpose. He goes over as a valve, safety valve here, and gets the ball up the field. He fits in very nicely to the, the scheme of things that Licky and Bart Starr want to do uh, on offense. 47-yard line in New Orleans. Packers with a first down. Jefferson right, loft and left. They swing it out the middle, and he dropped the ball. Second and ten. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, the Steelers, in another important game today. This one of the AFC, a field goal by David Trout, has Pittsburgh in front, three to nothing. And Baltimore and Washington are now tied at 7-7. There it is there in the second period. Burt Jones passing to Ray Butler. Some speculation that Jones might not play in that game today. Well, the brain trust of Bart Starr and Zeke Bratkowski on the left of your screen uh, with a headset. That's Bratkowski. you got to feel pretty good about how their team is performing so far. Both ways, offensively and defensively. Second down. They must win their final two games if they've got a shot at the playoff. Dickey, and that is complete to the tight end, Kaufman. Pickup of about six yards. Len Red and the safety, Tommy Myers, beat him there. It'll be third and a long three. Kaufman having a fine season. Came into the game with 49 catches. The free agent from Kansas State had to literally talk his way onto this football team back in 1978. Six yard gain for Kaufman. Third down. Ellis and Middleton. 
you at running back. Hoffman again. First down, and he gets forward to the 31-yard line in New Orleans before Rob Nairn and Mike Spivey pull him down. One of the biggest assets that the that the Packers have going for him now is the development of their offensive line. What's happened there, their offensive line has been playing very well the last seven or eight games because they're very healthy now. Uh, the early part of the season they weren't playing that well, but Ernie McMillan's group is playing very well, and, and Lynn Dickey attributes their success to that line. Ten-yard gain for the Packers. Jefferson in the slot right. Straight ahead is Gary Ellis to the 25-yard line of New Orleans. The Packers who have won five of their last six. And uh, perhaps if they get to a winning record, Bart Starr's job may be preserved. In fact, the way they're playing these days, uh, it may be that the operation of the Green Bay Packers will decide that uh, this encouragement is enough to have Bart continue. Five-yard pickup. Lofton, Jefferson, boy, what they bring to the dance. Jensen is in and running back in the eye. Packers going well, the second half of the season. Going well here today, but Middleton is shut down. Look at him fight. A couple of yards on second effort. Wilkes, rookie defensive end from San Diego State, and Glenn Red. Binding on that tackle, but Turdell Middleton with a good effort saved an extra yard for the Green Bay Packers. One thing is during this Packers streak, they beat Seattle, the Giants, Chicago, Minnesota, and Detroit. None of those teams with winning records, but the Packers needed the victory so desperately to get into this playoff race. They'll take them. They're only lost during the stretch to a team with a winning record, Tampa Bay. To Baltimore and Washington. The Redskins lead it 14 to 7. Dickey with time to Lofton. Touchdown. Lofton got isolated on Tommy Myers, and he was open at the goal line. Dickey with a perfect strike, and the Packers' offense continues to dazzle. Now watch Dickey as he drops back. A little play action fact, uh, play action fake to hold the secondary a little bit, and then he goes right to his best guy. See how he beats Tommy Myers here? That is a great, here it is, it has ISO. Now he goes inside to drive in the coverage and then bows it back out to the corner. You see Tommy Myers a little bit late in getting out to help. It's a good pass against that defense. Stenerud with a point after, and the Green Bay Packers have converted another Saints turnover into a toss. Dickey to Lofton, his second touchdown pass of the early afternoon. We've still got 5-12 to play first half. Wayne Wilson will take the kickoff. Again, he bobbles it at the four. And now Wilson trying to get outside will be shut down just over the 15 at the 16-yard line by Randy Scott. And San Diego in front of Tampa Bay, 14 to seven in the second period. If the Bucks lose today, they'd fall to eight and seven. That's where Detroit is following their victory yesterday over Minnesota would pull them into a tie atop the Central Division, and Green Bay, should they win here today, would pull right into that tie with them. 12-yard kickoff return by Wayne Wilson. San Diego touchdown scored by John Capaletti. It is first down here for New Orleans. George Rogers. Rogers turns on the Jets and gets out to the 25-yard line. Close to a first down. Forced out there by Cumby, the linebacker, number 52. Right about now is when a guy like George Rogers thinking to himself, well, we're behind 21 to nothing. A guy like this is thinking to himself, I want the football. He's the type of guy, he's a very unselfish guy. He's not going to be concerned about records so much because those will come to him as he runs. But he's uh, behind 21 to nothing. He wants the football because he wants to contribute and maybe uh, give Green Bay uh, some problems here. Green Bay probably thinking, well, it's 21 to nothing. We got the game under control. But uh, I, I wouldn't count on that. Not with George Rogers in the game. Rogers has moved ahead of Tony Dorsett in the NFL rushing. Of course, Dorsett playing later against Philadelphia. An 11-yard gain for Rogers and a first down for New Orleans. Lofton, by the way, has moved ahead of Billy Howell as the season 
yardage record holder on the Green Bay Packers that was held by Billy Houghton at 12:31, set back in 1952. James Lofton is the new Packer leader. Rodgers, not much room in the middle, batters his way for a yard or two. The nose man Jones, the defensive end Butler, there to stop him after a gain of a couple. They spotted at the 29-yard line of New Orleans. Rodgers needs 108 yards to pass Otis Anderson's record for yards gained rushing in a rookie year. He picked up three there. Ezra Johnson into the lineup for Casey Merrill at right defensive end. Johnson number 90. In the I formation, Larry Hardy makes the strong side left. Emotion growth. Manning up the middle, complete for a first down to Jeff Grote, a wide receiver from Bowling Green. And Douglas is the man to pin him down but not before the Saints first down at their own 39. Now, Growth isn't a guy that gets the ball a lot. As a matter of fact, they haven't thrown to him very much, but Archie just waits now. He gets good protection up front, and he waits for Jeff to get in the open over the middle and get him the football. 16-yard gain for Jeff Growth. Like Merkins, came over from the Houston Oilers. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh are now tied at three. And of course, a um, key game in the AFC Central. Cincinnati 10 and 4, Pittsburgh 8 and 6. Nothing clinched yet by those two teams. Rodgers running hard off right tackle behind Adams and Stan Brock. Cumby upset him, but not before he picked up close to seven yards. As long as George Rogers is willing to run and really go all out like that, his offensive line is really going to have to do some blocking up front. So they're behind 21 to nothing, but they mentally cannot let themselves uh, fall into a slump of being behind 21 to nothing. They have to play like the game is uh, actually uh, even now. They have to go out and establish the line of scrimmage all over again. Matt Hudson, the rookie from Georgia, has come in for Sam Adams at right guard. Adams went off limping. He's been bothered with a knee. Six-yard gain for Rodgers, and Tucson Tatter has met right at the line of scrimmage. Got a yard, maybe two, before he was driven back by Rich Wingo. Number 50 for the Green Bay Packers. 21 to nothing. The Packers lead with 2.26 and counting here in the first half of play. Now they've gone to that power eye again. The Saints and two tight ends. They have Hardy and Brenner in a tight end. Rodgers, Holmes, and Tucson Tyler in the backfield. Last time we saw this, Rodgers dropped the ball. Third and two they need. That's Tyler lining up right on the wing. And whistle sound. They have had to lay a game. I don't see a flag down. And it is the two-minute warning been sounded Manning a little upset he thought he was being called for delay and so with the two minute warning the mistakes from them here's how the quarterbacks are going look at Lynn Dickey continuing to sparkle and Manning not doing so badly seven of eleven two tipped interceptions third and two Rodgers does not get the first down as the Packers come up big defensively. Casey Merrill, number 78. Gary, Gary. I'm sorry, I called you Gary. Your name's Tim. It must <laughs> be that right. car that hit the Maurice Harvey. <laughs> but uh, what's happening here right now is, you know, the, the uh, Green Bay Packers, their defense has really come along the last half of the season. In that, in the last half, they have 18 interceptions in seven games. They not only play the run very well, like you just saw, but they're really good against the pass also. Nixon and Lee are the deep men, as we see Russell Ertzleben was punted once. 39-yarder. Standing at his own 32-yard line. Good kick by Ertzleben. It'll be Lee at his 18-yard line. It's outside Merkins and drives over the 20 to the 22. It is Jim Wilkes, reserve defensive end, making the tackle on him, and the Packers will start from their own 22-yard line when we reach Atlanta and Washington, Tampa Bay, and Detroit, all still in contention for a wild-card berth in the NFC. 
Dickey out to Gary Ellis on the swing pass, and Ellis running well, picks his way over the 30 for a backer first down. Rob Nairn and Glenn Red, the linebackers, 55 and 58 respectively, made the tackle. 45 seconds remaining first half. Hurry up offense for the Packers. They have a 21 to nothing lead. Wide pro set. They've got a slot formation to the right. Dickey swings it out to Ellis again. Up comes Watlett. He is dumped by the Karen blocking from behind in a legal zone and nonetheless got out to the 35 yard line. Ellis gain of about four yards. You know, with all the uh, the all the yardage and all the great play that, that uh, Gary Ellis has given them, you kind of wonder at this point in time, Tim, what the Packers would be like right now if they had Eddie Lee Ivory. Well, obviously, with those uh, wide receivers they've got, the offensive line playing so much better, a young offensive line, by and large, that has been growing up together in Green Bay. Uh, while they might be a little on the thin side in terms of uh, depth, uh, their starters would be uh, pretty impressive, to say the least, with Ivory back there. To go with uh, Gary Ellis has been a real fine. Second and seven. Dickey stumbled and then was sacked at the 25-yard line. A good, strong rush by the Saints. And the man to blow in there was Glenn Red, the rookie from Brigham Young. 24 seconds on the clock as now they start it again. And we're under 20 with the ball back at the 25-yard line. Green Bay in no hurry to do anything following that sack so we're going to wind it down here with the Packers impressive in the first half against the New Orleans Saints at the Louisiana Superdome Lynn Dickey with three touchdown passes they converted two turnovers into Green Bay touchdowns and and Huckleby are the deep men Benny Ricardo Pardon me, Erksleben kicking it off, and it is Huckleby from the two-yard line. And he does not get outside the 10 as the Saints. Jimmy Rogers, number 41, wrapped him up with help from Scott Kalor, number 53. So Green Bay will start deep in their own end this time as we begin the second half of play. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer at the Louisiana Super Bowl. Superdome, rather, a 10-yard return. And a... Lynn Dickey offensive drive begins at the 10 yard line of the Packers. Dickey had an outstanding first half. Three touchdown passes, 21 and up in Green Bay. Two tight ends were in, and you saw Gary Lewis set up on the wing. They went to Middleton, digging out for about two yards. Make it three. It'll be second and seven for the Packers. This young Saints defense. Jerry Boyarski on the nose, number 77. Two rookie linebackers, Jackson and Red. Two rookies in the secondary, Poe and Gary. Ellis and Huckleby now, the running backs for Green Bay. Huckleby. Got to the 15-yard line, and the Saints shut him down there. It's a very important drive, not only for the Packers to come out from uh, uh, way down inside their territory, Tim, but it's also very, very important, and probably more so, for the Saint defense to play well and make them punt from their own end zone. No gain on the play. They spot the ball right at the 14-yard line. Huckleby and Ellis in the pro set. Often left, Jefferson right. Saints need the big defensive play to get back into this one and motion everywhere, but the ball has not left the snapper's hands. McCarron, and it may be that Kaufman left a little too soon ahead of the count. Ball the start, snap. number 79 offense. Mark Conkar is being charged with the false start. The left tackle saying, hey, who me? Offensive lineman. <laughs> Look at him. He's he's pleading to someone to listen to him. I think Daryl Goreforth is the only guy that really <laughs> kind of commiserates with him. You're guilty, Mark. <laughs> Gunkar coming off an Achilles tendon injury. Oh, 
job briefly during that period to Tim Stokes. Stokes has a cracked fibula. Played a game on that before they discovered it. He's not going to see action today, of course. Third and 11. Dickey to Huckleby. Huckleby has stopped at the 15-yard line. And good defensive work. It was Kovach and Red, the inside linebackers combining, and the Saints came up with an excellent defensive series. Six-yard gain, but the Packers will have to punt. They went in at halftime, no doubt, uh, Tim, talking to themselves that they could play better. And their offense is having a tough time scoring points, so the defense now has to take charge and get the ball back. And this is one of the things they do real well, the Saints' defense, is, in, is, uh, is get turnovers for their offense. Stakowicz has punted only once, and he hits a dandy here, backing up growth all the way to the 34-yard line. Growth with a good return right up the middle gets back to the 46-yard line of New Orleans. Ron Cassidy is there and George Cumbie. So the Saints have pretty good field position again. And it'll be Archie Manning continuing at quarterback when we return. But uh, really, he's been uh, somewhat victimized. You might call him on one of the interceptions. The other one was a tip that uh, was just a good defensive play. This is Rodgers. Getting two or three before he is buried. Rich Wingo, the man to pull him down. Bone Phillips plans to use Dave Wilson today, but he did not schedule him for the second half or for the first and third quarters or any of that kind of preseason thing. He told us the other day that he would uh, let the game dictate when this young man, the rookie from Illinois, would get into the game. And he has determined, Bum Phillips has, that it's not the time yet to give Manning a chance to get the offense moving. You know, it's really unwarranted for the people to boo Arch because he's carrying out the, the game plan. That's what the game plan means. Changing quarterbacks would not make any difference. Second and eight. Double tight ends are in. Hobie Brenner joining Larry Hardy. Quick drop, and then he fires it out to uh, Merkins, and a good play brings a first down to the 40-yard line. Four Packers combined, and not Merkins back. That gets the crowd aroused, and it was... Douglas, who was the man who put the muscle on it because Lee and Harvey already had him wrapped up. The crowd did not like that, but it is a first down play for Vito Marcus. Now watch Archie. He fakes that way to get the defense to go to his left, and then he gets the ball back out here to Guido. And this is a, a good, tough play by Guido. He's a smaller guy, and here he comes. Here comes old Mike Douglas over to put a lick on his lips. I tell you, Mike Douglas is a guy who, uh, he's like a JJ, uh, uh, like a John Jefferson on defense. He really makes things happen and keeps the spirit going over there. 13-yard gain, Holmes and Rogers in the I formation. Larry Hardy lines up to make the strong side right. Both in motion, play action. Manning, complete. Perkins, Perkins running well, gets close to the 10-yard line before he's thrown back. And he is a little angry at the treatment he's getting down there. He thought he was hit late again, but again, it was a close call. He was still moving on that previous play when Douglas popped him. There could be no real complaint there. Good play by Douglas. First down. This could be the thing that the Saints need. They need to probably uh, probably feel sorry for themselves a little bit. Archie does a good job of getting the ball right down the, thing, right down the middle to Guido. Now get up the field. He wants to get yardage. Yeah. Yeah, he might have been right. 23, Maurice Harvey might have given an extra little shot. There goes Guido. Goes right to the open area to get the ball. Mark Murphy with the initial hit. Saints are deep in Packer territory. Rodgers cannot shake the tackle at the 10-yard line. Good defensive play. Douglas, one-on-one, -on -one, would not give up on Rodgers. And then finally got some help and stopped him at the 10 for a gain of two. Tim, if they can get the ball in the end zone now, it'll really help the Saints, not only on the board, but spiritually. They're a little frustrated. They got to get in the end zone. Colby Brenner has come in to make the double tight. Number 85, the rookie from USC. Holmes has come out. One running back is Rodgers. Growth left, Merkins right. Rodgers to the six-yard line behind Sturt and Lafari out the left side. Anderson was there. So was McCoy. So was 
Mark Murphy, number 37. Now, the eye formation allows George to do that. You see what he did? He got the ball deep in the backfield, and as he gets the ball, he looks to see where he can go, and he can go either way outside or go straight ahead up the middle. That time, he went outside. Four-yard gain. He's up to 52 now. The ball at the six-yard line. They need to get to the two for a first down. Holmes is back in in the eye formation, the lead back for Rodgers. Broken motion. Rodgers, straight ahead, gets to the two-yard line. Good block by Holmes. It'll be close to the first down yardage. Wingo, number 50, made the hit for Green Bay. And there is George Rodgers. Needed 108 yards today to break Anderson's record to uh, tie it actually 109 to go ahead of it rookie rushing record South Carolina and Bum Phillips says wow what a player he has been this year doesn't think there's any doubt about who should be the rookie of the year in the National Football League he said hey this was a one in ten football one a one win football team last year and here's a guy that has done it all without a whole lot of help First down for the New Orleans Saints. Hardy and Brainer are in. Tyler, Holmes, Rogers. So they've got the power ready here to try and push it in. First and goal from the two. I'd look for George right now, Tim. Five yard pickup for Rogers. This first and goal now at the two. Four down lineman. Goal line defense. Packers trying to stack it up, and Rodgers, touchdown. Number 38, the rookie from South Carolina, scores his 11th touchdown of the season. Look at Jack Holmes in here diving over just reckless abandon throwing his body to clear the way out for his buddy. Here's a good goal line shot. That's good work right here by the camera guys. Giving you a good good shot here from the end zone of what it looks like when having George Rogers come at you. In for the point after is Benny Ricardo and it is good. So the Saints with their first offensive possession of the second half here at the Superdome Approaching the rookie record, has scored his 11th touchdown. That breaks a club mark set by Chuck Muncy here in New Orleans. Huckleby for the Packers, pulled down at the 20-yard line. And the Saints now, inspired by the crowd that's come alive, Frank Warren, rookie defensive end, number 73, comes up with the tackle. And Bum Phillips got to feel a little bit better about the way they started. They had a very good defensive series. Then they took the ball and marched it down for the score. That's a good point, Tim, because not only did the offense get a share in the joy of scoring, the defense was the reason they, that, that the offense was in position to score from the very beginning. The Saints are back in the game. Lynn Dickey brings out the pack. Off the left, Jefferson right. 21 to 7, Green Bay lead. They are still in playoff contention. They must win today and again next week against the New York Jets in order to make it. Dickey to Lofton. Lofton trying to spin away, but he is taken down by Johnny Poe, the number eight pick by the Saints from Missouri this year. First down, Green Bay, out to the 35-yard line. So Dickey, calmly on first down, finds the open man, Lofton. So much for 40-some uh, uh, rushing plays they expected to have. 14-yard gain. They're going with what they have been doing best, as one might expect. Jefferson and Lofton and Hoffman catching the pinpoint passing of Dickey. And Bordelon in the game of linebacker number 50. Saints, first down. Screen pass, Ellis. Ellis has met at the 39-yard line. Picked up about five yards before Tommy Myers, the veteran safety number 37, put the hit on him. So Green Bay coming smartly out of their own end. See the see Dickey's knees right here. He has two Lennox Hill braces on those knees, and he he doesn't have any problems with his knees. Everything else hurts him except his knees. But he told me in the locker room, he says, "I'm going to make sure I have no problems with those knees." He just well, does that for support. What a story he has been coming back from very serious injuries three times. 
Selby. Picks up about four behind McCarron and Goforth and Conkar off the left side. He'll be short of the first down by about a yard. Glenn Red, the linebacker number 58, made the stop. Dickey is on a streak of eight consecutive completed passes in this football game. Last week, he was 21 of 30 against Detroit. And a pair of touchdowns. He's got three touchdowns today. Two tight ends are in. Gary Lewis running Kaufman on the third and short. Crowd trying to raise up that defense. Huckleby, he has hit and maybe stopped short. And it was Eloy's Grooms who really put the first lick on him. Durland Moore pinched in from the left side. And they have stopped him. The Packers will have to punt. And around Jim Kovach leading the applause for the defensive unit as they leave the field. Growth goes back. So twice now, the Saints have been able to stop the Packers. Although credit to Green Bay, they did come out from deep in their own end. Close to midfield. But Stackowitz will have to punt it from his dirty. They come up with a trick play. Charlie will snap it. Stackowitz, good punt. Growth from the 19 yard line. Growth up the sideline, nearly got away with a burst of speed that was forced out by Cliff Lewis, the rookie linebacker number 56, but not before he got to the 33 yard line. See that group of games here on CBS next Sunday. All right, the Saints who have come out with an inspired defensive effort in the second half and have scored their first touchdown, have the ball first down from their own 33. 15-yard return by Jeff Grote on the punt. Jack Holmes behind the right side of the Saints line did not get much as he was met by Wingo and Douglas, those aggressive linebackers of the Green Bay Packers. Got two, we'll call it second and eight. Miami leading Kansas City seven to nothing. Tony Nathan scoring for the Dolphins. Miami nine and four coming into the game with one tie. And Buffalo in front of New England at the half 17 to seven. If Buffalo wins, they would move to 10 and five. So we'll be watching those two for you in the AFC East Division. Second and eight here in the Superdome. to the 39-yard line. Mark Lee and Maurice Harvey on the coverage, but Merkins had lots of room over there. Now watch John Hill, 62, the center. He's got a bad knee. He's going to get a lot of pressure from Terry Jones all day, but the reason Archie's been able to throw, especially that ball right there, which is a nice pass, is because guys like John Hill are playing with sore parts of their bodies. He's got a hurt knee, but he's still in there playing. First down, New Orleans in Green Bay territory, a 27-yard gain for Guido Merkins. 25 catches coming into the game, his first full season as a wide receiver, as a regular. George Rogers stumbled a bit at the line of scrimmage. That gave the Packers a chance to react, and they closed him down after a gain of maybe two. On the tackle was Wingo and Butler. And here is the picture up to the moment. George Rogers, 1,555. Tony Dorsett playing later against Philadelphia, 1,506. Billy Sims, 1,361. You know, the Packers held Sims to just 64 yards rushing last week. It looks like Rogers will surpass that. In motion, Merkins. scrimmage the other downfield that it came after the interception looked to me like the ball might have been tipped again but we'll wait and see as they sort out the flags and 
we'll have another look at the play. The discussion by the officials, led by referee Bob McElwee. Illegal motion against the offense. That penalty will be declined. Illegal push in the back against the return team. That penalty will be assessed. Will be a first down going this way. All right, so there, the penalty against the Saints declined, of course. Green Bay has the football on the interception. They were penalized after the interception. So it'll be marched off against them. They won't be as deep in New Orleans territory as they would have been, but they have the football. Motion, offense, decline. Illegal hands, push in the back. 22 on the return team, accepted. First down. That was Mark Lee trying to spring Harvey for the distance. Harvey's second interception of the game, the fourth turnover, the third interception. Surrendered by the New Orleans Saints. Green Bay has a first down at the New Orleans 34-yard line when we return. Uh, was uh, intercepted. I have to say that uh, Terry Jones did a good job on John Hill. And Harvey came up with a second pickoff. The Packers at the 34 of New Orleans. Dickey completes to Jefferson, and he holds on as he takes the hit from Myers and Weaver. And Green Bay striking quickly a first down at the 10-yard line of New Orleans. John Jefferson has meant so much to the Chargers when he's with them, and he brings that same type of concentration and physical and mental ability here to the Packers. And, and to, to have a play like this occur right after a big break like that makes Green Bay a, an explosive football team. Lynn Dickey is 15 of 17 to this point. Three touchdown passes. First down at the 10-yard line. Gary Ellis trying the left side behind Darrell Goforth. 23-yard gain by Jefferson, setting up the first down. Wilkes and Red made the tackle. Monty Bennett is in at the nose spot. The rookie from Kansas State, Jerry Boyarski, who had started from Pittsburgh a little bit hurt, hasn't been back in since he went out. San Diego in front of Tampa Bay, 14 to 10. Field goal by Bill Capice. Second and goal here, the pitch out to Huckleby. Huckleby in the five, inside the five to the three-yard line. And the Packers on the doorstep again. You know, Frank Tim, what led on the tackle? Excuse me, Tim. You know, we say so much about if you're a defensive player getting off the blocks. When you get down here inside the 20, there are a, a lot of people in a small area. So what you have to do as a defensive lineman or a linebacker is get away from the guy that's trying to block you and get uh, the ball carrier to run east and west. I'm, excuse me. <laughs> to the sideline, work yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, who would know? Who got hit by the car, me or the other guy? <laughs> Third and goal for Green Bay. Play action. Wide open, Kaufman touchdown. Pretty play by the pack. And Lynn Dickey continues flawless passing against this young secondary of New Orleans. He is having a field day. The fourth touchdown reception by Kaufman having his best year as a Packer. And here's a real low angle on it. You'll see exactly as a defensive player sees it. Lynn fakes to his halfback to get the defense to go to the left. And then uh, Paul Kaufman delays coming off the line of scrimmage just a little bit to get the room to catch the ball. Stenner with a point after try. It is good. Saints good kickoff. Backs up Rodgers two yards deep. Wilson told him not to come out, but Rodgers brought it anyway, and he crashes out to the 20-yard line. Upset there by Cliff Lewis, number 56 for the Packers. So the Saints will start, and it will be Wilson, number 18, coming in. Dave Wilson at quarterback for New Orleans. The Packers went 34 yards in four plays following the intercept. Wilson rolled up more than 3,000 yards at Illinois. 52.9 completion average. The Illini with 19 touchdowns. Once passed for 621 yards against Ohio State. They have high hopes for the future. Dave Wilson here in New Orleans. Rodgers over the 25 to the 26-yard line. So far here in New Orleans, 
Wilson has completed 76 of 160 passes, 47.5 completion average. Kansas City and Miami are now tied up at 7-7. Of course, Miami still battling with Buffalo atop the AFC East, and Kansas City battling Denver and San Diego in the AFC West. Washington walloping a hapless goal, 35-7. Washington, a remote chance at a playoff spot. They've got to win their final two games and hope to help. Rodgers, trying the wide side right, gets to the 27-yard line. A good ankle tackle on him by John Anderson, the linebacker, 59. And the gun sounds. That is the end of the third quarter with the score. Green Bay Packers, 28. And the New Orleans Saints, 7. Will with the Packers in control, 28-7. Fred, what's interesting, total yardage through three quarters. New Orleans 191, Green Bay 213. Equal in first downs, 12 apiece. Four turnovers has killed the Saints. George Rogers battering on third and two and appears to have the first down yardage. You know, they made a quarterback change by bringing Archie out of the game and putting in uh, Dave Wilson. It really has no, uh, uh, no, we're not pointing fingers at Archie. He's been the victim of some very bad breaks. The Saints could be in the game. It could be 14 to 21 right now. Absolutely, and it was the plan of Bum Phillips publicly to uh, get Dave Wilson into the football game, and he decided this was the opportunity. Rich Martini and Andre Thompson, the former Andre Thompson, a former Green Bay Packer. We were told that uh, he's uh, changed the pronunciation of his name, spelled A-U-N-D-R-A, from Andra, as he was known in Green Bay, to Andre, as he's known here in New Orleans. Maybe a little more French suits the uh, New Orleans area. Rodgers, nowhere to run out the right side as four Packers swarmed all over him. Rich Wingo was there. John Anderson, Terry Jones, the nose man. Tim, Not about a yard and a half. Tim, the Packers are doing a very good job of defense. They're very disciplined. They're ahead. They're not uh, uh, forgetting their responsibilities and assignments. They're keeping everything, such as that pass to George Rogers, in front of them. So after the ball is caught, they can collapse on him and make the play. So doing a good job defensively. Tucson Tyler in the game at fullback as Rogers comes out. Ezra Johnson in defensively for Green Bay. Merrill off. Wilson. Pressure. Incomplete. A flag down. It was intended for Andre Thompson. A flag down downfield. Heavy rush on Wilson forced him out of the pocket to the left side. We'll get the call here from Bob McElwee. Offensive interference signal. Quickly, uh, score handed to us. Buffalo now leading New England 19 to 7. Buffalo 9 and 5 going into the game. Miami 9 4 and 1 in that AFC East. Matt Kavanaugh tackled in the end zone. A safety scored by the Bills. Offensive pass interference declined. Third down. Penalty declined, and it brings up third down. And eight is Bum Phillips. Not wearing his hat indoors. The sideline here at the Superdome. Nickel defense in for Green Bay. Estes Hood joining the other four secondary men on third and eight. Wilson steps up in the pocket going deep for Thompson and double coverage breaks it up. Mark Lee and Maurice Harvey. They've been pretty steady today and they did not give Thompson any room to maneuver on that play. You know, Tim, everybody talks around the league about the San Francisco 49ers secondary. You know, Mike McCoy is the oldest guy at six years back there. He's a steady player for him. But these other guys, Maurice Harvey, Mark Murphy, and Mark Lee, are very good football players. And the longer they stay together, the better they're going to be. Third punt of the day coming up for Ertzleben. 37-yard average. Deep man is Fred Nixon, awaiting it at the Green Bay 25. 13.33 remaining regulation time. Green Bay in command. Good kick. Back at the 18-yard line, Nixon slips at the 22 and is covered there. Jimmy Rogers down to make the tackle. And so we'll return to keep their playoff hopes alive. 
Lynn Dickey has completed 10 in a row. He has 16 of 18. But it's pretty hard to top that kind of a passing performance. Turdell Middleton, number 34, the five-year man from Memphis State, met by Monty Bennett and Ricky Jackson, a pair of the many rookies on the New Orleans Saints defense. Pickup of three yards. It'll be second and seventh. Miami in front of Kansas City, 10 to 7, a game affecting both of those teams and their playoff hopes in the American Conference. Miami, 9 4 and 1, atop the AFC East. Washington really doing it to Baltimore, 35 to 14, and the Redskins staying alive in the playoff hunt. Hoffman started in motion. They throw it back to the right side. Middleton cuts against the grain, gets over the 30 to the 32. Monty Bennett and Ken Bordelon, Glenn Red all getting in on the stop. It'll bring up third and about two. Now, Dickey fakes in here, not very much of a fake, but gets the ball out here to Middleton. Look at Ricky Jackson. You see what he does here? He gets out parallel with the receiver and makes him cut back into the grain where all of his teammates can make the play. It's another good play by Ricky Jackson. Guys, his... his uh, uh, as young as he is, don't really catch on to defense play that way. Third and two for Green Bay. Trying to control the football now. Ellis and good defensive work by the right side of the Saints. Defense looked like they stopped him short. Erlen Moore, Ken Bordelon, the initial contact. There's Monty Bennett at the bottom of the pile. They all got in on that. Good effort. Zeke Bratkowski with the headset and Bart Starr. Behind him, a little unhappy that they didn't get a little more yardage, but it's close enough to measure. Well, Bart Starr got to be enjoying the second half of this season. Things have not gone well in his tenure at Green Bay. Early in the season, off to a bad start. Speculation he would not be rehired. That still remains. They say a winning record would probably bring him back. Maybe 500 will do it. They got to be impressed in Green Bay with the way the team is playing here today. So uh, more than just the playoff hopes of the team at stake, also the coaching future of Bart Starr. Lynn Dickey certainly doing his part for the Packers' fortunes. Ellis in motion. Lofton trying to get blockers in front of him. They didn't get there in time, so he just ran it up and got close to first down yardage again. Ricky Jackson muscled him out of bounds, a flag down on the near sideline, however. Fred, it uh, looked like they wanted blockers in front of Lofton, but didn't have much of a chance no to get him there. Push out of bounds. All right, somebody dropped oh. the flag inadvertently. What but uh, let's go back and talk about that play. They, they threw the ball quickly out to Loft, and then they had Lockers Luck trying to get in front of him. What, what was he supposed to be doing on that play? Well, what happens here? Lofton gets the ball right here, which is obvious. He waits for people like uh, uh, Gray Cook to come out in front of him to make the, to make the headway. He has to wait for his blockers to come out and then get up the field behind those blockers. And the Saints did a good job of getting there before those blockers did. All right, they did get the first down. They are at the 45-yard line in the I formation, Green Bay. Middleton. Going right behind the center, McCarron, the right guard, Leotis Harris, Bennett, and Bordelon tripped him up after a gain of four. It'll be second and six. Dickey now on a 12 straight completion streak. Has been literally passing at will against this young Saints defense. Just about what we had expected the Packers would try to do. And indeed, the Saints trying to run the ball with Rodgers, but once they got behind, they've had to start throwing him, actually. Good hole for Gary Ellis, and he's still going. Ellis inside the 30 of New Orleans. Ellis has that quickness right at the point of attack. He can blow through the hole. Doesn't have great speed once he gets out there, but he's hard to bring down. Watch this run. Watch, watch McCarron the center. You see what he does here to 91? That's Monty Bennett. He gets him turned and gets him out of position, which creates a natural hole. If everybody else along the defensive line does their job, there's still a hole there because McCarron got 
Bennett turned. Saw a nice little hook there by Leotis Harris getting his <laughs> arm on the defensive lineman, too, that the officials didn't see. That helped open the hole. First down at the 30-yard line of New Orleans. Play action. Dickey has the time. He's got Jefferson wide open. Touchdown. John Jefferson, and he chucks the ball up into the end zone seats. I mean, he was wide open, and Dickey spotted him breaking loose and fed the ball perfectly. 13 pass completions in a row, a 30-yard touchdown play. If you get this much time to pass the ball, you are going to complete a lot of passes. What happens here is he goes to the end zone to John Jefferson, who simply outruns the coverage because coverage can only hold for so long. And if there's, if there's not enough rush on the quarterback, the, the coverage breaks down because the receivers now run past the coverage. Well, this one is no longer in doubt as Stenerud pops it through. And Lynn Dickey has hit four scoring strikes. He has had 13. Dickey has just tied Green Bay's record for touchdowns in a game. You know when that was set? 1942 by Cecil Isbell against the Cleveland Rams. Oh, Cecil, yeah. I you remember, remember old Cecil, yeah. all right. For his point. Meanwhile, Wayne Wilson returned it to the 23-yard line. Fumbled the ball before he got it upfield. That's the third time Wilson has bobbled it, but it turned out not too badly for him. George Rogers, 70 yards rushing and 26 carries. He's got to be a little tired by now, but this young man continues to be the mainstay of this young Saints offense, and really uh, he has had some kind of remarkable year. And it has to be the odds-on favorite for Rookie of the Year, playing on a four and what now looks like a 4-11 team. Tyler and Jimmy Rogers are in the lineup. George Rogers getting a rest. Dave Wilson complete to Jimmy Rogers. Stopped short of the first down by Cumby. And now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Tim, the Giants have taken a 17-3 lead on St. Louis. For Packer fans, it's important because if they were to go to the tiebreaker, they lead the Giants, having beaten them twice. Let's go back to you now in New Orleans. All right, Brent. We've got uh, substitutes in the game for the New Orleans Saints as we get a measurement on that pass play from Dave Wilson to Jimmy Rogers. Giants in front of St. Louis, 17 to 3 on Carpenter's touchdown run, and Cincinnati out in front of Pittsburgh, 17 to 3. Cincinnati a victory today would clinch the Central Division of the AFC for them. Pittsburgh hanging in there. Both those uh, starting quarterbacks, of course, uh, damaged. Anderson less so with a sprained toe. Bradshaw badly hurt last week. So it is second and about a football to go for the Saints here. And they're going to throw. I always like this call on second down. Wilson completes to Hobie Brenner. And Brenner breaks a tackle and bowls his way into the Green Bay territory at the 41. I love that call on second and short. Third and short. What we have here is on the right-hand side of your screen, Cliff, see you see Cliff Lewis come in here. That's his responsibility, Cliff guessed at that point in time and thought the play was going to be a handoff but you got to stay home because the guy turns around and runs and scrambles and completes a big play like that stay home 26 Cliff. yarder good job by Hobie Brenner shaking off the tackle of Mark Lee Rich Martini's in a wide receiver with Andre Thompson Bum Phillips giving all of his roster a chance to play here and of course Cliff Lewis is in for Anderson for Green Bay Wilson to the sideline incomplete intended for Thompson We'll bring up second down from the Packer 42. A flag was down on the far side of the field, however, on that play. There's Andre Thompson as he now. Personal foul, five yard face mask foul, 51 defense. That is Guy Prather, another reserve linebacker. Got a face mask foul on the far side of the field away from the play. Do you suppose somebody tried to turn it in on him and he just grabbed him by the mask yeah. as he went by? That's a good chance that happened. So they pick up a free five. It'll be first down for the Saints at the 37-yard line. Packers have Prather, Cumbie, Wingo, 
Dan Lewis in at linebacker, so two substitutes in there. In motion, Rich Martini, number 86. Draw play, Jimmy Rogers. Gets over the 35 to about the 33-yard line where Wingo made the stop. If George Rogers does not return, he will have left the game with 70 yards, and that will be uh, short of Otis Anderson's record for yards gained rushing in a rookie year, but of course he has one more game left to do it against the San Francisco 49ers here next week. You know, Tim, you said at the top of the show that the Saints needed to run George to win, and, and, and the stat is really indicative of, the, of a great Packer defense. Second and eight for New Orleans. Wilson has time, and it is intercepted by George Cumby, stealing it away from Jimmy Rogers. Help on the play from Maurice Harvey on the coverage, but Cumby showing that he can get back there on pass coverage. What a what a great pair of hands! What uh, what a great pair of hands George Cumby has. That's a great play, getting back in there, getting in front of the guy getting the ball before he steps out of bounds. Fumble. Green Bay will now give Rich Campbell some playing time. Their number one pick from California. 6'4", 224 pounds. Curdell Middleton gets the ball on first down, picks up about five yards. Jim Wilkes made the stop, the rookie from San Diego State. Campbell is 15 for 30, passing in uh, the little playing time that he has had behind Lynn Dickey and David Whitehurst for Green Bay in his rookie year. Cincinnati in front of Pittsburgh, 17 to 3, with 147 remaining in the third period. The Bengals' victory would clinch that AFC Central Division for them. Spot formation right. Gary Lewis in at tight end. They give it to Gary Ellis, and Ellis straight ahead is dropped by Wilkes and Monty Bennett. They've got those two rookies playing side by side on the front three for New Orleans. And when they found Jim Wilkes, he was their 17th pick in the draft, Fred. And they were looking at some offensive players on some bigger college teams. And they saw what a job he did against a, a star who shall remain unnamed. And they said, hey, maybe we'll take Wilkes. When they, he was still there in about the 12th round, he was a 17th pick of the Saints. And they think they've got themselves a real good prospect. Third down and two. Campbell at quarterback, Hoffman in motion, Gary Ellis cutting it back to the opposite side, and good defensive work by Tommy Myers, the safety. Number 37 holds him to about a yard and short of the first down. Right, right now here, here's Lynn Dickey. He's, he's, he's just taking it easy, having a little uh, Kool-Aid over here. He's a heck of a guy. He, he really spent some time with me today in the locker room before the game, and and uh, I'm good. It's glad to see a guy like that doing well because of all the injuries he's gone through and, and all the hardships he's had throughout his career. And he's just a, a, a terrific guy. I'm glad to see he is enjoying such a great uh, season. Ray Stackowitz will punt it away for Green Bay. Jeff Groth from the 25. And Groth, good running, gets it over the 35 to the 36 yard line. Ron Cassidy making the tackle. Growth has become the all-time punt return leader on the Saints. 44-yard punt. Personal foul, number 41 on the receiving team. Hands to the face. Foul ruled post-possession. Post-possession foul against Jimmy Rogers of the Saints. So they'll back it up from where Growth got to. Jimmy Rogers, not related to George. Jimmy's a second-year man from Oklahoma. Came back from the Canadian Football League as a free agent, 1980. I like his records, Jimmy Rogers. <laughs> yeah, right. Country, country Western singer. <laughs> so uh, it's a big one all the way back to the personal foul, yard line. Number 41 on the receiving team. Post possession. First down. It's the first penalty today by the Saints, and they are the fourth most penalized team in the NFL. So uh, they haven't been making those mistakes today, but the turnovers and other matter. They came in with 40, and they've got 45 now. First down for New Orleans. Dave Wilson continues at quarterback number 18 in the I formation. Tucson Tyler 
named after the governor of Haiti, Pierre Toussaint. Jimmy Rogers is out to close to the 15-yard line where he's dropped by Cliff Lewis, rookie linebacker from Southern Mississippi. You know, I'm really impressed with the Packer defense, but mostly their linebacking core. Cliff Lewis is really a backup player, but I'll tell you, he's got a lot of speed. He hustles. He's 226 pounds, a lot of range. He's uh, He does a real good job for them filling in. Mike Douglas, of course, I, I'm really impressed with today. And, and uh, people people don't really realize that Green Bay has really got themselves a great defense. They're really starting to play well at the proper time, too. They've been pretty consistent against the run all season long, and boy, they've shown they can defend against the pass here today. And they've done so for the past six or seven games when they have really been hot in the pass defense category. Over the 21-yard line, Tucson Tyler. As we see, San Diego has opened an 11-point lead over Tampa Bay in the third period. James Brooks has scored on a one-yard run for the Chargers. San Diego. They've got lots at stake in the AFC West as they are eight and six trying to catch Denver at nine and five. Seven yard gain brings up third and three here. Double tight ends are in for the New Orleans Saints. Brenner and Hardy. Holmes, Tyler, and Rogers. Running backs, one of them on the wing, and a loose ball. Rogers. And the Packers have recovered again the sixth turnover by the Saints this afternoon. And it looks like it was Kurt Allerman, reserve linebacker number 60, who came up with it. Randy Scott, another linebacker for the Packers, really came in like a misguided missile. Watch right up here to the left of your screen. Boom, right there. He takes on, he takes on the, the lead backer, which was uh, Jack Holmes and really causes a lot of action to happen deep in the St. Territory. He's a fumble by Jimmy Rogers. They have Jim Jensen and Harlan Huckleby at the running back positions. The tight end is Gary Lewis, the rookie from Texas at Arlington. John Cassidy in a wide receiver. Campbell gives it to Jensen. Jensen bulls his way. Well, about three yards. Tommy Myers was there. The linebacker number 58, Glenn Red, made the initial contact. Pick up of two by Jensen. McCarron goes out. Charlie Honey comes in at center. Number 61 for Green Bay. Second and eight. 313 and counting as the Packers with a victory will move to eight and seven. And it will go down to the final week of the season as they still have a wild card chance. They have an outside shot at their division title. Huckleby going wide to the right, running hard, gets through one tackler and bowls over another to get inside the 10. Hanging on to bring him down was Myers, number 37, the 10 year man from Syracuse. You know, Tim, this is where a team like the Packers miss a guy like Eddie Lee Ivory. You get down inside someone's plus territory, inside the 20, and you get a bat coming around the corner like that, like, a, like a, an Ivory can. You, you really miss a guy like that out of your backfield. Now, watch, watch as he sets up his runners. Look at the little dip, little hesitation he makes right there, which allows him to get outside. It keeps everybody, the defenders, inside on that little fake, see? All right, it is uh, first and goal just inside the 10 for Green Bay. And it is Jim Jensen blasting to the five-yard line with 2.09 on the clock. The Packers grinding it out here but are close enough to get yet another score. We have reached the two-minute mark to play here in regulation time. And they would fall to eight and seven. Green Bay's victory here today would make them eight and seven. Detroit beat Minnesota yesterday to go eight and seven. Well, they will all be tied for first place going into the final week at NFC Central. Huckleby is thrown for a loss by the Young Saints defense. You see Monty Bennett, 91, and Frank Watlett, the safety coming up for the veteran Tommy Myers. Watlett, 49. Gain of about two. The third down and goal. Fred Dreyer has gone down to the sidelines. He'll be talking to some of these victorious Packers. Reserve linebacker Scott Pallure is in the lineup. Rookie from Washington State, picked up from Dallas. As time ticks away here with Rich Campbell finishing up the game for the Green Bay Packers. Nixon and Cassidy, wide receivers out to the left. Jensen and Huckleby, the running back. Jensen 
nowhere to go. Stacked up, and the linebacker, Rob Nair, number 55, put the hit on him, but they really did a good job along the front. And the Saints defense stacking it up. Giving him nowhere to maneuver. Maybe he lost a yard on the play. One minute to go. Campbell looking to the sideline for instructions. Turnover's the difference today for the young Saints. It's been their problem all season long when you have that many kids playing. As we mentioned, they have 16 rookies on their 45-man roster. They're looking to the future under Bob Phillips, and the fans here in New Orleans seem to understand that. They've been very supportive. Jensen inside the five, running hard, gets to the two, loose ball. Jensen... Dropped the football. We'll have to wait to see who came up with it. And the Saints are coming on the field like they have the football. So the Saints have the football on a first down from their own four-yard line. We have 26 seconds on the clock with San Diego in front of Tampa Bay, 21 to 16. James Wilder, an eight yard touchdown. So the Buccaneers hanging in their game. Big one for them, obviously. Scott Stout getting his first action of the afternoon. Rookie running back from UCLA, acquired from the 49ers, number 32. And a clock ticking down to eight seconds with Dave Wilson. Just using up the time here, he'll throw the ball on this down. Out to Stout. Stout over the 15, and that does it. So the Green Bay Packers, with the most impressive afternoon against this young New Orleans Saints team, Impressive offensively by Glenn Dickey, by Lynn Dickey and company, and uh, certainly defensively as well, as there were six turnovers by the New Orleans Saints, and uh, the, there are the two coaches, Bart Starr and Bum Phillips. Of course, Bum uh, wishing uh, the Packers well on their final day against the New York Jets next week. Lynn Dickey with uh, just an outstanding afternoon. He had two touchdown passes in the first period to Ellis and Jefferson. Then he hit Lofton in the second quarter. The pack led it 21 to nothing at the half as Lynn Dickey being congratulated by Baum Phillips for his outstanding afternoon. Dickey hit Kaufman for another touchdown in the third quarter and then Jefferson again 30 yarder in the final period on route to a 35 to 7 win and defensively the Packers were awfully tough. Harvey had a pair of interceptions. George Cumbie also had an interception. And uh, they picked up the uh, Cumbie also recovered the fumble by George Rogers and Mike McCoy added the other Green Bay interception. So they were a picture perfect football team this afternoon and now have an eight and seven mark and head up to the chilly city of New York to meet the Jets at Shea Stadium to finish up the season and of course for the New York Jets who are nine five and one now that is a most important game for them so uh, somebody is going to come out on the short side when they meet next week now here's the picture in the NFC Central you see Green Bay eight and seven with a chance to go nine and seven with a victory next week Detroit beat Minnesota yesterday so they are eight and seven and they play Tampa Bay in their final game the Buccaneers are losing but are still in their game against San Diego if they can come back to win, they would move to nine and six and would be uh, obviously in the uh, comfortable position going into the final game, somewhat comfortable position. But uh, it is still up for grabs as the NFL heads into its final week for all of those teams in the NFC Central. The final score, Green Bay 35, the Saints 7. We'll be back in a moment. The tale of two coaches, 52-year-old Walt Michaels and 47-year-old Bart Starr. Two months ago, there were prime candidates to be deposed.